Hey guys, I'm Andre. I'm Elton. I'm Tristan. And this is ATV. Sorry about this taking so long that we're putting this like in the middle of January, most like maybe even near the end of it, mm-hmm. even though it came out like in December. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff has been going on, to, so yeah. we didn't really have enough time to do this specific video. Plus, Ruby takes up a lot of our time yep. when we do reactions. Yeah, so we just couldn't really fit this in anywhere, but we still want to do it because. This sounds like it's going to be an intense fight. Yeah. The King Sethroth, the guy with the largest sword in the world. Whooshing. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, villain to Cloud and Virgil. Dante's, Dante's brother. Dante's brother. Who Dante's pretty overpowered. <laughs> so I want to see how Virgil... Because I've never actually played the Devil May Cry game. So I don't played know. played a bit of the new one. I did play a bit of, I think, Devil May Cry 3. I played a bit like like the beginning of it. I don't remember where or when. <laughs> I wanted to get the game, but I'm yeah. poor. I don't have money, so... No, you're not. You're rich. <laughs> no, but, I'm not. I did add five better computers. Rich in personality, fam. <laughs> <though. laughs> it doesn't mean... But yeah. It's all you need. But, yeah, so... Obviously, because we don't know too much about it, we're going to find out with you guys in this video. So, yeah, let's no, just... I know more about Sephiroth. And I, yes. the most I know about Virgil is the stuff that they did from the Dante vs. Bayonetta yeah. death battle. They yeah. just shed some light on Virgil too. I know some things about Virgil, not too many though. Yeah, but let's just find out about more about him in this video. So let's go. Let's just go. <laughs> and we'll also, yeah, to forget, or we forgot, we'll discuss probably a bit after to say who we think is going to win. Yeah, we're going to say uh, who we think after they yeah. explain everything to us. Who we think, we'll say who we think will win. The great philosopher Plato once said, The measure of a man is what he does with power. But to these guys, power is the measure of a man. Sephiroth, the fearsome one-winged angel of Final Fantasy. Uh. And Virgil, the half-demon son of Sparta from Devil May Cry. He's wears an arm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Longsword. (laughs) Through the millennia, legends were passed of a source of unlimited energy, the Promised Land. Unfortunately, all hope of finding this sacred ground had been lost, until the Shinra Electric Power Company excavated the remains of a being believed to hail from the very land they sought. They called this weird naked purple lady Genova and thought that if they could bring her back to life, she could help them find the Promised Land. But apparently, they just didn't have any phoenix downs. If they couldn't <laughs> resurrect a being who could lead them to the Promised Land, Shinra decided they would simply create their own. After many experiments infusing Genova's cells with those of a human's, they finally found their savior. His name was Sephiroth. That's Sephiroth's name! With hair like that, it's no wonder he was created in a lab. Look at how majestic that mane is. According to Final Fantasy lore, Sephiroth has to use an entire bottle of shampoo and conditioner every single time he bathes. Why do you know that? How did Cloud beat him? Fan club or something? Uh, for research. <laughs> but Shinra wasn't interested in Sephiroth for his oh, hair. God. Instead, he was an essential part of their soldier program. Wait, wait, that's this expensive. electric company has their own private exactly. military? I'd hate Zach, to miss a payment the best guy guys, ever. Especially if they sent Seth after me. I mean, look at the ridiculously long sword he Yeah, look at that. that. That's his Masamune. This seven foot two behemoth Another blade Masamune is a lot blade like the no dodgy swords that Yo, that sword's taller than him. But instead of wielding something long with two hands like those, Sephiroth only needs one. Even that speaks nothing of his effectiveness as a warrior. Yeah, you know when people spread legends of someone, they usually make him out to be even better than he really is? It's the total opposite with Sephiroth. With his superhuman speed, strength, and durability, Sephiroth was instrumental in ensuring Shinra's victory in the Wutai War, conquering the last free nation on the planet. He returned home a legend. But all those warm, fuzzy feelings of victory didn't last long. While on a mission to the town of Nibelheim, Sephiroth found a bunch of books on the Genova Project. That's when he discovered he was a secret science project the whole time. The truth crushed (laughs) Sephiroth and drove him mad. In a rage, he annihilated Nibelheim, but was stopped by a mercenary named Cloud Strike. Sephiroth was impaled by the Buster Sword and fell to his death. 
Oh, well, that's disappointing. <laughs> Which is what I would have said if Sephiroth hadn't dropped into a hole in the ground that led him to the giant Windows screensaver called the Lifestream. The Lifestream is a buried river of energy which basically maintains life across the planet. Normally, merging with the Lifestream is the equivalent of entering the afterlife, but not for Sephiroth. And this is where things get weird, so buckle up! Still conscious, Sephiroth's essence floated through the life stream for years until he absorbed enough energy to rebuild his body. With the energy of the life stream, he could control other beings with Genova cells. Including the corpse of Genova, who he manipulated like a puppet and disguised as himself. Oh, what the hell? That's his mom? Who would do that to their own mom? I mean, I know she's a genocidal alien monster, but come on! Probably makes a good breakfast. But Sephiroth's descent into the life stream offered him even more. It transformed him from a mere super soldier into the most dangerous being on the planet. Oh my He's God. strong enough to throw a man hundreds of feet skyward, <laughs> like move at supersonic speed, and withstand brutal stab wounds through vital organs. He's got illusion powers that can trick people by creating an entirely fake scenario. He can lift people with his mind, including himself, and then he can just fly. That's how it works, right? Additionally, Sephiroth can cast magic thanks to his on-hand materia. Materia is crystallized life energy which grants different powers according to the type of materia used. This lets Sephi attack with fire, lightning, ice, and earth-based magic. <laughs> he can block attacks with barrier and reflect, and heal himself with cure and regen. And ever since jumping into the life stream, he's had unlimited access to his magical powers. With his new godlike abilities, Sephiroth began a plan to stop mankind from drawing up the kill planet's life force. I don't know. That doesn't sound so scary. Oh, he... Does that mean he's an environmentalist or But to do this, he decided to use black materia to summon a giant meteor to destroy the planet and absorb all of its life energy for himself. So like an opposite environmentalist. A planet vampire. I mean, we're talking about a guy who kicked a dude through solid concrete, <laughs> murdered the crap out of a 30-foot serpent with a spike through the face, and kicked a dragon's flamethrower attack without even getting a teensy bit hurt. A particularly impressive feat considering this attack was capable of one-shotting oh, fellow soldier <laughs> Zack Fair. Uh, Wiz, Not you may that. need to up your prescription, because that's definitely Cloud. No, 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 Cloud was just recalling false memories there. It was really Zack. However, it was Cloud who impaled Sephiroth three livestream with the Buster Sword. And holy god, is it huge! It's like two feet wide! You <laughs> think a stab from that thing would just <laughs> cut him in half? That's true. Yeah, Except that's just kind of shook it off. And in his rematch with Cloud, he blocked an attack strong enough to crater the metal around him. Considering the diameter of the crater, the surface area of Sephiroth's feet, and assuming the most likely steel composition, I estimate this attack to equal nearly 1,600 tons of force. Sephiroth can use that wicked sword to stab and lift wannabe heroes by their ribcage, slice through skyscrapers, and shoot energy beams that can shred these huge Mako cannons. And from the life stream, what? Sephi figured out what? he could create new bodies oh, or even God. take on other forms. These forms greatly resemble certain creatures found in Christian and Jewish mythology. He certainly looks the part when he goes into his <laughs> ultimate form. Look at that. Regardless, Sephiroth does possess a single black wing, a blatant symbol of his fall from grace. So basically Final Fantasy does everything it can to not be subtle. Just like Sephiroth's most devastating attack, Pluto. Supernova, which decimates an entire solar system. What? Wait, uh, we went through. If Zeph is that powerful, how does anyone ever beat him? Exactly. Don't get the wrong idea here. There's a lot of debate over how Supernova actually works, but I think it's pretty clear that Sephiroth isn't creating the explosion himself. Rather, he's transporting his foes to a specific point in time within an alternate dimension. Careful, Wiz! Isn't Don't that OP? <laughs> Just look at it. When he uses the attack, reality literally crumbles away like glass. This is identical to the animation for certain summoned creatures. According to the official Crisis Core Complete Guide, summons draw their targets into their own space in order to attack. And this is no different. In the Dissidia of Fighting Games, Sephiroth goes for the simple approach and opens a dimensional hole to the explosion. The attack is even described as sending destruction even into other dimensions. And if he could summon planet-busting meteors at will, why did he go through so much trouble to get the Black Materia, which literally summons meteors? That would explain why the supernova doesn't hurt him. He's not really there, just using those illusion powers of his. With all these powers, I can't believe Cloud and friends were able to take him down. He's not invincible, but he's damn powerful. 
Ever persistent, Sephiroth departed with a final chilling promise. I will never be a memory. Why does he sound so bored? <laughs> 2,000 okay, years let's see ago, this a great mutiny transpired in the underworld. The oh. demon warrior Sparta rebelled against his evil master, Mundus. To protect the world, Sparta did his best to seal the connection between Hell and Earth. But then Sparta got lonely. Or maybe it was just a sausage fest in there. Either way, he snuck out of Hell long enough to knock up this chick named Eva. Mm. And she popped out a couple of awesome demon slayers. Nice choice. You may remember the younger of the two, Dante. Oh yeah, he fought that witch chick with the hair. But the eldest and potentially deadliest brother was the one and only Virgil. Virgil and Dante were rivals from birth. Dante was a goofball. Virgil was serious. Dante hated his being a demon, and Virgil loved it. It's that classic odd couple scenario. But then one fateful day, in an act of vengeance against the late Sparta, a group of rogue demons separated the two brothers and killed their mother. Virgil was believed to be dead. But in reality, Virgil survived and set out on his own path to seek his father's immense power half for human, himself. And he's 100% mm. equipped to be a butt-kicking demon slayer. Sure. Just like his like As a half-demon, Virgil can like jump several times once robbed like after losing <laughs> supersonic speeds, Which I think is just the one quickly, spot. kinda like that Wolverine guy. He can tough out getting stabbed through the lungs, intestines, the heart, body parts I'm pretty sure most people need. Not if my experiment has anything to say about it. You say something, Wiz? I said not if Virgil's abilities have anything to say about it. Well, <laughs> sadly, for any human demon or human demon who gets in his way, Virgil also happens to carry some extra deadly weapons on hand, including a spiffy katana called Tomato. Yamato. Eh, it's said <laughs> that this sword can cut through anything, even dimensions, and probably tomatoes. Actually, yeah. Yamato is the exact thing Sparta used to seal hell from Earth in the first place. Virgil's sword fighting prowess oh, so. draws from his that dark a very slayer powerful fighting sword. style, which emphasizes teleportation, lightning quick movements, and even quicker slashes straight from the sheep. This technique is directly influenced by Ei Jutsu, a real-life Japanese art of the quick draw. <laughs> and thanks to Virgil's demonic Yai powers, he can attack so fast the blade seems invisible. Yeah, the only thing better than fighting with one sword is fighting with eight! With Virgil's ghostly eight? summoned swords, he can mm. turn himself into a living Beyblade. <laughs> like a machine gun. Oh, yeah. Or make it rain! Blades may be Virgil's bread and butter, but if he needs to focus on brute strength, he switches to Beowulf. He can charge up blink of an eye punches and kicks that hit like a cement truck made of lead and KO some of the toughest demons. The melee in fighter and a and hey, uh, looks like he digs but Street Fighter. None and of this stuff really trick up Virgil's seems sleep. like it's, it's, it's god level. level. Yeah. He can access a form known as Devil Trigger, and this mode amplifies everything. His strength, speed, and healing all get a huge boost, making him He's like that sword that can cut before. through Plus, anything. he just looks badass! <laughs> In his quest to become as powerful badass as point. his father, Virgil's ability is hey. skyrocketed. He's taken down dozens of demons in the blink of an eye, and escaped an illusion from the sorcerer Arkham, which makes normal people go crazy. But if anything's gonna show off what a son of Sparta can really do, it's pitting him against his bro. Yeah, sure, Virgil can what they easily said. avoid Dante's yeah, bullets, but it's like, why dodge them when you can spin illusion. your sword, line them all up, and fire them back? Like a boss. <laughs> in the same battle, they briefly created a 12-foot diameter open space in a heavy rainstorm with nothing but their sword swings. On average, storms can fill a cubic foot space with as many as 30 raindrops. So, Virgil and Dante must have destroyed 108,000 raindrops in less than a second. If Virgil can swing his sword that fast, Jeez. I bet he'd make a killing mowing lawns, or chopping meat at the deli, or getting <laughs> haircuts, or doing that thing where he chops bad guys to pieces but so But can he bring meteors from space? Dead yet. Like when he bumped me. Can, he do? <laughs> can he do? And then he punched him so hard, he flew 55 feet up and hit the ceiling. When comparing Beowulf's size to Virgil, he appears to be as large as an elephant. Given what's available, this seems like our best measure of Virgil's strength, but there is one issue. The Devil May Cry series makes frequent use of slow motion to depict the absurdity of these characters, and this could be a similar case. So let's look at another slow-mo feat, the Rainstorm fight. At one point, the rain freezes in place for about two and a half seconds, as Virgil and Dante keep moving. 
indicating a 14,500% speed increase in real time. Applying the same degree to the Beowulf punch gives us an acceleration speed of about 4,882 feet per second. With that in mind, we can apply Physics. our previous data to deduce the maximum height sand ceiling and determine Virgil's striking strength to be nearly 720 million newtons of force. That's a lot! It matches Virgil's incredible toughness, too. We already more mentioned his super awesome, healing yeah. factor, but it's even more overpowered yeah. than you think. Virgil once got completely cut in half, but healed so fast that it's impossible to even notice. And his regeneration ability can be worn down. Yeah, that's how this weird jester guy beat him. But it takes a lot to pull off, and Virgil can always just use Yamato to hop through dimensions to get away if he wants. Sadly, Virgil never that got seems to like rule the demon realm like he wanted. Yeah, yeah, that can just go instead, through the, the dimension to, to be tried to run away. transformed Virgil into his puppet, irreversibly manipulating his mind in the process. And then Dante kind of, uh, exploded him. But one or two losses against someone who's basically goddamn Satan hardly makes him a weakling. Hell and Earth trembles before the power of Virgil. It'll be fun to fight with the Prince of Darkness. If my father did it, I should be able to do it too. Ooh, now. All right, the okay, combatants so are set. Let's end this debate. Oh, once God. Oh, that's... But before I mean, I think, we get to the bloody I mean, slicing and dicing, pick up some blue uh, apron and slice and dice in your kitchen. Know. That's the Virgil, I guess. Unless Andre goes for Sean, I'm going Sephiroth then. Yeah, I'll probably go with Virgil. Ah! Uh, okay, so we lose, Tristan, son! Tristan are going to go with Sephiroth, and Andre's going to go with Virgil. Oh, maybe just... Andre will win. Well, I don't know. So I guess, oh, no. let's see. The wine plan. Oh god, this is so long. For renowned wines, three meals with your first order. If you visit Louisville.com, non-GMO ingredients. Non-GMO! <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Good stuff. It means it's healthy. <laughs> but right now, it's time for a death battle! Okay, here we go. Hmm. You are powerful. I can see it. <laughs> okay. Who are you? Your despair. Okay, sword. He is strong. He has a long sword. Whoa! Okay! Right. Oh yeah, he's a brawler too. Yeah. I thought they were gonna keep it I honestly out. think oh. that it's a hurdle of speed is gonna it's gonna be powerful and regenerate power. It's gonna be the thing. Yeah, but they're both fast. Look at that. Yeah, but I think Virgil's probably gonna be a fast. Right? It's like, it's not even just movement. It's not Ooh. even just movement speed. It's just literally. Like oh no, he can heal. Strike speed. Virgil okay, can heal. You're strong. Yeah. Yeah. But are you fast enough? Don't move. No! Don't do it, bro, bro. I suppose it can't be helped. Go Super Saiyan! <laughs> Make up speed first. Uh, You're fake. Stop wasting my time. What the? I thought we were in final form. Yeah. Okay, Sephiroth needs to go final form. I don't think he has a different form. Oh, he does have that other form. Beyblade! Oh, let it rip! <laughs> That's pretty uh, sick. They haven't done any of the dimension stuff though. I'm, to me, I think Virgil's gonna try running away through a different dimension. And Sephiroth's gonna kill him. That's pretty sick. I think Sephiroth's gonna try putting him in a different dimension. It's not gonna work for that thing. That he doesn't get tricked. The yeah, there we go! Yeah. What is that? Super Nova. I saw oh, shit. to pierce the fabric of our dimension, so I cast an illusion to disguise this. Witness oblivion. Then it's not gonna work. 
Oh, oh, he sliced through it. Oh, but he's injured. Heal. I'm free. And no, oh, that's not actually on. So you are. Oh. Now go back together and win. Uh, we won, Elton. Extra crispy. <laughs> Take that. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I can't, no, wait, 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 we don't know. Virgil might still win. Led to his victory. Wait a minute, I thought the lore said Virgil's sword could cut through anything. Why didn't it cut through Severoth's sword? Yamato was a unique weapon, but its legend clearly exaggerated. On multiple occasions, it's clashed with Dante's blade and even a common rocket launcher without cutting through either, and sometimes requires an exuberant amount of force to cut through tougher material. But let's discuss the real facts. Like strength! So Virgil with Beowulf could do That's 720 kind of million move to hide that stuff. But there aren't a lot of good Sephi strength feats to compare. First, let's compare Sephiroth to a fellow first class member of the soldier fighting force, who had also been experimented on with Genova cells. Zack Fair. Zack! For him, the he's best. the not cloud guy who fought that dragon. At his cool. peak, Zack could cut through a large metal door with one swing, seemingly with most of his strength. Given the size and width of the door, this feat's sheer strength comes out to 980 million newtons. Bro? And Seph was what? way stronger than Zack. In fact, if we look at their strength stats when they fought that dragon, Sephiroth was three and a half times stronger than Zack. Putting Sephiroth's strength output at over three billion newtons. That's almost as much force as... So many newtons! <laughs> strength isn't everything, though. Virgil was That's technically weird. faster Honestly, than Sephi, but Sephiroth has handled physics in people one. similar speeds before. Plus, Sephiroth could survive plenty of hits because his healing power is broken. The capabilities of Virgil's healing factor was nearly unprecedented, but it had its limits. In contrast, Sephiroth's healing abilities were only limited by his pool of magic, which was unlimited. Well, he also had to take some time to cast each healing spell, but that's why he distracted Virgil with his illusions. We know Virgil was susceptible to illusionary and mental attacks, as it's happened to him multiple times and even led to his in-canon demise. And Sephiroth's illusions could hide his ultimate technique. Yeah, Virgil's healing was pretty awesome, but it was never gonna hold up under an exploding sun to the face. Virgil put up a good fight, but he couldn't match Sephiroth's superior strength, magic, and techniques. Looks That's like this devil's me. cried for the yeah. last time. Yeah. The winner is Sephiroth. I think that was kind of a thing of how that they left yeah, out. The that if you want to get the fight music for this episode of Death Battle, just okay, actually, let's wait and see who's next. There is no next. So you can get music from Thor, 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 Woman, Thor, Thor, Zichko, a bunch of Death Battles. And if you want exclusive commentary on this episode, then put that box right over there in the corner. Let's Thank you so much for joining us for Death Battle. Because I'm cutting this out. Excited to show you some awesome episodes next year in season five. Season five. Okay, about the fight, I honestly think that it was kind of like, why would you not say that literally the sword doesn't cut through everything before? But the, they didn't, I don't think they said that it cut through everything. Yeah, they the said in legend, well they said in the legend it cut through, it was said to cut through anything, even yeah, dimensions, that's, and that's the sword that was used to cut he heaven, uh, hell and earth yeah. from each other. They also say it was over exaggerated, but um, that, that they said at the end. Uh, obviously, they say it was legend says that. So I guess maybe you could have insinuated, but it's kind of like jumping through hoops to try and get like instead of just watching. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, it is. but Seth has still won. Yeah, how fucking again? Because he's insanely OP. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's magic, you can summon the sun. Horus, you're done. Uh, I guess yeah. with all that, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a like. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to catch more of our videos, and uh, write in the comments down below any series or videos you would like us to watch in the future. Yep. And with all that, see ya. See ya.